Introducing One for Kids TV, the number one rated Islamic children's app in the world. Get ready for a world of fun, education, and value-based entertainment. Join thousands of families worldwide who have rated it as a top app for Muslim children and embark on an exciting journey of learning and fun. Download the One for Kids TV app now from the Apple, Google, and Amazon stores today. A true believer has a mission and a vision. Unlike any other human being, a true believer has the answers to all the questions. We know where we came from. We know where we are going to. And we know why Allah Azza wa Jal created us. This is why while living this life on earth, everything has sense. Everything has a meaning. And this is only to a true Muslim. Others who are Muslims, but not through conviction, but rather through inheritance, may find it difficult when they see things around them changing and turning to the worst and sometimes to the best. This is why when we look at the reality of our lives, it seems that it has no value. But on the contrary, it has great value to us because what we do in this life determines with the grace and mercy of Allah whether we'll end up in paradise for eternity or we will end up in hell. May Allah Azza wa Jal gives us refuge from going to hell. There is a fact that is inevitable and no one doubts it. Yet rarely you will find Muslims working for it. And that is death. Death is the fact that Muslims and non-Muslims alike believe that it is inevitable. It's going to happen. No one can escape it. Allah Azza wa Jal stated this clearly in the Quran. Kullu nafsin dha'iqatul maut. Verily, each soul will have a taste of death. And if anyone, if anyone were to escape death, it would have been our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam. But he himself had died. This fact, Muslims unfortunately are heedless. They're not aware of, they're not working for that day that will come to each and every one of us. No one is anticipating his death. However, death can be positive. And there are characteristics, there are signs. When an individual is met by one of them, this is a sign from Allah that it is a good ending. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant me and you a good ending. Among these signs, the Prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam, that whoever ends his life with la ilaha illallah, then he will enter Jannah. How easy is this to us Muslims? It sounds easy because it's a statement that anyone could say. Unfortunately, it is not as easy as it may seem because your life ends according to what you had been doing while being alive. In order to be successful in saying the kalima, you have to live on the kalima. You have to worship Allah Azza wa Jal truly by the kalima. But if you simply say it without any conviction, without any love, without any trust, without any sincerity, then a lot of those who do this will fail in saying La ilaha illallah to be the last thing they utter before dying. 
How many people end up doing bad things? How many people die while watching a movie or listening to a song or doing haram transactions or oppressing people or cheating or lying? These people, when death comes, they find it difficult, if not impossible, to say, La ilaha illallah. And this is why the Prophet wasallam said that the sudden death is the taking of an angry one. La ilaha illallah. When Allah is angry with someone, He takes him suddenly. And this is not the rule as the scholars say. It depends on the individual. If the individual is righteous, practicing, fulfilling his obligations, and he dies all of a sudden, then this is from Allah as a gift so that he would escape the torment and the agonies of death. But if the individual is not practicing, if the individual is sinful and he gets the sudden death, then this is Allah angry with him and taking his soul without giving him a chance to repent, without giving him a chance to give the rights to the people he had oppressed. And that is why the Prophet said, asif." The sudden death is the taking of someone who's angry and that is Allah, the Almighty. Among the signs of a good ending is when the person dying begins to sweat. And I've seen this many times. A believer sweats a lot before his soul is taken out and specifically the forehead. The Prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam that the death of a believer is signified is there's a sign of the sweat of his forehead. Also, among the good signs of a good ending is when a person dies on this day, the day of Friday. The Prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam, no Muslim, whoever dies on the day of Friday or on the night of Friday, except Allah would save him from the torment of the grave. The day of Friday begins from Fajr and ends at sunset. The night of Friday began at yesterday's sunset and extends to today's Fajr. So the night of a Friday precedes it. And this is the night of every month in Islam. If tomorrow is the first of Ramadan, tonight is the night of Ramadan. And when we begin Taraweeh prayer. Now, Allah Azza wa Jal has also placed great reward over patience. And there are deeds, there are tribulations, there are calamities. If you are patient, Allah Azza wa Jal will give you Jannah and will erase your sins and it would mark a good ending for you. The Prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam, the martyrs are seven other than those who are killed on the battlefield. So a person can be martyred not only by dying in jihad, but also if he is one of these seven. The Prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam, the one who dies by the plague is a martyr. The one who dies drowning is a martyr. The one who dies with pleurisy, it's an illness that comes in the intestines in the side. The person who dies with the stomach disease. So this can also include cancer. The one who dies in a burning house, who dies in a fire. The one who dies in a collapsed building. 
and the woman who dies while in labor or while in the state of pregnancy all of those are martyrs in the sight of Islam also in another hadith the Prophet tells us that the person who dies with the illness of the lungs tuberculosis is also a martyr so all of these are martyrs providing that they do not complain that they are patient and tolerant until they die this severity of pain and calamity that afflicts them qualifies them with the Allah's mercy and grace to be martyrs and when we say that they are martyrs we do not give them all the treatment of a martyr who dies on a battlefield we do not wash a shaheed on the battlefield we do not shroud him except with the clothes he was wearing we do not offer salat al janazah the funeral prayer we bury them but these seven we deal with them and treat them like everyone else we wash them we shroud them we pray for a funeral prayer and we bury them among those who are classified as martyrs at the side of Allah those who die defending their wealth their livelihood their families their honor their religion all of these are considered to be martyrs the Prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam, whoever dies defending his wealth he's a martyr whoever dies defending his family someone is attacking your wife your sister your daughter you fight him off and you die you are a martyr whoever defends his religion he's a martyr and whoever defends himself he is a martyr and by saying that you die in the process you do not go to the far extreme and kill rather it's an Islamic principle that you ward off evil from the minimum to the maximum not the other way around so someone wants to take your money you don't kill him straight away rather you try to defend it De defend your money to fight him off to impair him and if not possible except by killing him then you kill him because he's the oppressor and you have the right to defend yourself the Prophet ﷺ was once asked by one of his companions O Prophet of Allah a man comes wants to take my money the Prophet said والسلام, remind him of Allah remind him of hellfire so the man says O Prophet of Allah if he does not remember the Prophet said then seek the help of the Muslims around you and the man said O Prophet of Allah if there were no Muslims around me the Prophet said then seek the assistance and the help of the authority of the ruler the man said if the ruler is far away and is not accessible the Prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam, then fight for your wealth defending it until you are either one of the martyrs of the hereafter or you preserve and safe keep your wealth I say what you hear and I seek Allah's forgiveness for you and for me so ask Allah Azza wa Jal to forgive your sins the question one may ask do we have to undergo all these calamities and tribulations in order to have a good ending must we die in plague or in cancer or under a falling building so that Allah would give us a good ending no this is not necessary Allah Azza wa Jal can give you a good ending in a more peaceful way providing that your death takes place while you are offering good deeds while you're repenting 
while you are in the state of ibadah. The Prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam, when Allah Azza wa Jal intends good for a servant of His, Allah will use him. Allah will, will employ him, using or employing him. The word is yet istamalhu. So the companion said, O Prophet of Allah, what is using or employing his servant? Allah, the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, Allah would drive his servant to do good deeds and then take his soul while doing it. What a better ending would be for a Muslim than to be in the state of ibadah. Imagine that your soul is taken out while you are in prostration in Mecca, in front of the Kaaba and on the night of Al Qadr. What more beautiful death can you be? You die while you are in Hajj. The Prophet tells us that on the day of judgment, he'll be resurrected saying labbaik Allahumma labbaik in his ihram. What more beautiful death is there than this? And this is why the Prophet said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, deeds depend on what the last of them will be. Your deeds on the day of judgment will depend on what or how you concluded your life. If you were blessed to conclude your life on good deeds, this is how you be resurrected. But those who die in a cinema or in a nightclub or listening to haram, watching haram, transacting in riba or in gambling, or in anything, they die in such a state. They will be resurrected in such a state. May Allah have mercy on our soul. Servant of Allah, death has a great toll on us. Nobody likes to remember death or to mention death while they are with their families and their loved ones. The Prophet والسلام, on his dying bed, he had a small cup next to him and he used to dip his hand in it and wash his face and say, La ilaha illallah inna lil mawti sakarat. La ilaha illallah, death has agonies. It's painful. And this hardship that a believer faces before dying is not a punishment. Is it? Otherwise, the Prophet ﷺ would not have gone through it. And this is why Mother Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, said, after I saw the agonies of the Prophet ﷺ on his dying bed, I do not hate seeing it for any of my loved ones. Because this is a sign of good ending. However, one would mix when he sees and reads the hadith of Al-Bara' ibn Azib, may Allah be pleased with them. When the Prophet told us about the ending of a believer and how his soul comes out of his body like the drop of a water coming from a skin container or a water skin container. So smooth it comes out. While the soul of a disbeliever or a sinful person his soul disperses inside his body, then comes out cutting the veins and nerves like a skewer passing through wet wool. So the scholar said, how can we combine between this and the agonies of death that Muslims face and that the Prophet had faced They say that the agonies of death that precedes the exit of the soul has nothing to do with this hadith. And this is this what explains when some of the disbelievers die in a peaceful fashion as we see. They suffer from illness and they die in peace. 
So we think, huh, he died in peace. Well, other Muslims may suffer and shout and scream in pain and agony. This is no connection. There is no connection. The severity and hardship of dying is when the soul comes out. And this is something you do not see. The believer's soul at the very end comes out softly and nicely as the Prophet had said alayhi salatu wasalam. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, try your level best to have a good ending. Try not to receive the angel of death except while you are in the state of ibadah, while you are in the state of dhikr, while you are in a state that Allah loves to see you in. Because when death comes, it does not seek permission. It comes uninvited. And Allah Azza wa Jal only knows how many days, how many hours. Allah only knows when death will come to us. Oh Allah Azza wa Jal, conclude our days on this earth with goodness and good deeds. Oh Allah, make the last word that comes out of our mouths before dying. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. O oh Allah, do not delay us on this earth to senility so that we wouldn't become a burden to those around us. Do you ever get worried that your child may click on the wrong video online? Do you wish there was a safe channel for your peace of mind? Well, there is. The number one rated Muslim kids channel in the world, One for Kids TV, is here to solve all these issues. The channel has no advertisements and is safe for your children to browse and watch their favorite videos. With a wide selection of cartoons, songs, educational videos, and much more, your children will not only stay entertained, but also learn so much about their deen. You can listen to songs while your device is switched off and you can download videos to watch them offline. One for Kids TV is 100% run and owned by Muslims, which means the small amount you pay for your subscription is a continuous charity for you as all the funds raised go towards the production of new cartoons and educational films for your children. The One for Kids TV app is now available on Apple devices, Apple TV, Android devices, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku, so you can watch on most devices and smart TVs. Download now for a free 14-day trial. Mm -hmm.